So I wanted to do a quick, or perhaps a super quick video on this little USB tester that I got to replace the meter hawk that was giving me some issues with uh, USB power delivery not functioning for monitoring as well as the bug in the rated capacity that I did in the anchor videos for battery capacity where it would re reset or give erroneous values saying 72,000 milliamp hour or you know 99,000 milliamp hour when the packs were 26,800 if they were 100% efficient. Long story short, I actually got that one returned and I actually purchased this Drock US uh, U arrow down B meter, USB meter. Oh, it's in the shape of a USB plug. That's cute. By Drock. And it's very bright blue. I, I kind of prefer the matte black of the uh, meter hawk and the exposed like PCB, but th this is nice because they do protect the PCB. Instead of the PCB being exposed, they do protect the PCB inside, and you have just a plexi whoops, a plexiglass or whatever cover over this. It still has this protective cover on it. That's why it looks kind of scratched up. But I wanted to show a pretty cool feature that this thing has that I thought was a gimmick when I first plugged it in, and then I did a test that I did not expect that produced results that surprised me and I found quite fascinating. So it involves a battery bank, uh, a micro USB cable, and a lightning cable, an Apple lightning cable. Now the reason why I'm using two different cables is that this cable, when you plug it in, is completely open circuit. There is no power draw on it unless you plug it into something. So I'm going to plug this in. Whoops, don't press any buttons on it. Actually, hopefully you can read that. Let me actually increase the brightness on the display because I have turned it down for other testing. Uh, one thing to note is that most of these, it seems the Meter Hawk, there's a few other YouTubers like Big Clive, they've got. I forget the one that he uses. They all are based on the same. They are shaped the same. They look basically the same. They have this pretty much the same menuing and interface. So I don't know if there's one core supplier developing a reference design and then these each, these companies just, they license that design or whatever and decide whether or not to turn on various features. Like the Meterhawk didn't have options to select colors of the menus. So that is an interesting additional feature that they've added. Whoops. There we go. So you can go and like cycle through all the colors, which is an, I guess, kind of a nice feature. The first something that it costs less than the Meteor Hawk one. I don't know how often I'll be playing around with this. If you're not careful though, you can land on two of the same colors and then you can't read any of the text until you move down like this. I have white on white and you cannot read anything. So you gotta go past it to be able to, you know, see the text again. Anyways, going back to the main menu next. Okay, so the thing I thought that was a gimmick was that the meter hawk and all the other meters that I saw had two digits past the decimal. And for current, they had three digits past the decimal. So it would measure down to one milliamp and 10 millivolts. And so this one goes down to one millivolt and 10 microamps. And I thought, okay, that's just a gimmick. How can the A to D, the shunt and the voltage monitor actually be able to monitor that stuff? So I don't know about the voltage yet because I haven't been able to have a precise measurement there, but for the current, kind of accidentally discovered this simple test, which I found to be quite surprising. So the first thing we do, we're testing a micro USB cable, plug in the center here, and this is just a standard micro USB cable. So all the pins here are open circuit. The two data pins and the voltage rail are all open circuit. So there's no current flowing through this cable to anything. 
But if I grab the lightning cable, which many may or may not know contains active circuitry in it to do some authentication and make sure that it can charge. It actually contains a, a MOSFET in here that actually is controlling whether or not current goes to the phone. So my thinking is that if you had this plugged into a really lousy charger, this is designed and all the licensed lightning cables are designed to protect the iPhone or whatever device from being damaged. So that being said, there's active circuitry in this device. So I plugged it in. On the meter hawk, it just showed zero. When I plug this in, the power save went on. So you plug it in, it's plugged into nothing, and I'm showing 40 microamps, 30 microamps, 40 microamps. And then down here, two milliwatts. So that's pretty cool. And as soon as I unplug it, it drops to zero. So this Drock meter actually has precision, at least for current, down to the 10 microamp level. I'll have to do further tests on the voltage. But the point is, if you're looking at USB tester, this one is actually a, a little bit cheaper than the MeterHawk one. The USB-C so far seems to be working better than MeterHawk. And it has a little bit more precision than the MeterHawk or a bunch of the other ones that I've previously seen. As it stands right now, I kind of, I like the Strock one. Um, I, again, I would prefer it not be so bright blue, but that's just a personal taste sort of thing. And I do very much like that it's packaged, the, the, the printed circuit board is packaged in between two pieces of Lexan or whatever plastic this is, as opposed to it just being a, a printed circuit board, which looked cool, but you know, you're exposing a printed circuit board to, to the elements. So this is at least sandwiched in between something that's plastic and is protected. Also, the range on this, I'm not sure if it's above the meter hawk one, but this is zero to five amps. Um, what other cool things does this have? There's all the fast charge recognition modes. It does do... They do say right here, voltage measurement resolution down to 0 0.001 volt. And it's caught between a crease here, but the current measurement resolution is down to 0 0.0001 amps. And the voltage measurement accuracy is 0.5% plus two words. And the current measurement ac accuracy is plus or minus 1% plus four words. So yeah, I'd like to get some, I might set up some resistive loads, like a, a supply and just kind of test a couple situations to see how the current accuracy. Also, it measures temperature on board and it says it's temperature measurement error is plus or minus three degrees Celsius or six degrees Celsius. I'm not sure. That's a pretty huge range. I'm wondering if that's just because of where it's situated on there or what they're using. Maybe it's just on chip uh, measurements. But the current can go up to five amps. So you can have 24 volts at five amps, which is almost 125 watts across this thing. I mean, not dissipated across this, but 125 watts can flow through it and it'll, it'll be fine with it. So that's interesting. Other than that, it's, it's pretty straightforward. The instructions are a little cryptic, but after a couple reads and mess, messing around with the interface, you kind of get an idea of what is going on. So far, I like it. And I think that the little tests that I did here with the lightning cable versus the micro USB cable just kind of demonstrates that it's not BS and they're actually measuring it at a more precise rate. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.